Hi, everybody. This is Debbie Metcalf. I'm the founder of Stolen Horse International, and we are having a live broadcast tonight. We are going to talk with one of our victims, more recent victims, Joe Marissa. I'm sure many of you have seen his net posse alert uh, for Newt, a barrel horse that was stolen from him on June 12th. Uh, we thought that this would be a very timely program for you because we have so many questions about um, what do you do to search for a horse? And people think sometimes that all you do is call the law enforcement and they find your horse. And there's, that's not always what happens. Matter of fact, that is rarely what happens. So today I hope that you listen to Joe and listen to what he tells you and understand that while you're, watching this program that this happened to Joe, this happened to me, this has happened to over 6,000 people that we've worked with for 23 years, and it could happen to you too. So while you're listening to Joe's story, know that theft does not discriminate. It doesn't always happen to the other person, and it could happen to you. Now, when you're watching this video, we're going to introduce you to Newt, just in case you haven't seen him. Keep in mind that with your help, this video has been viewed 74,572 times. It's got a people reach of 165,652. The shares on this one post alone, just one post, are 3,187. We can't do this without you. The reason this has been reached by so many people is because of people like you. Now let's meet Newt. Another summer day is coming come away. There is some growth. Okay. That was a very short video. You'll see a, a little bit more of that later. But now it's time to introduce Joe. I met Joe, like many of the people I meet, not in a good way. I met him when the times were at his worst, and he had walked out into his pasture one day, and his beloved horse was gone. Just gone. Uh, Joe, this Hi. is Joe Marissa. He is in Pennsylvania. <coughs> And he is one of our newer stolen horse victims that has filed a report on Stolen Horse International. Uh, Joe, tell us a little bit about yourself and your your horse, Newt. Well, I bought Newt whenever he was a baby. He was only four months old. And was going to use him as my backbone of my breeding program. <clears throat> Newt grew up and... He never quit. He became a successful barrel horse, even though he didn't get to run with the best barrel racers in the world. He ran with somebody that just started out barrel racing on a professional level, and he never gave up. He was always there in the money, on top. Didn't matter what I threw at him. He always accomplished it and conquered it. So what made Newt so special? More so than any other horse could be. Well, he, first of all, he's with me for 20 years. And he never quit. He taught me even the smaller, not as strong horses can still get it done. And yeah. he produced too. He was everything to me. So he was your heart. Yes. Yes. He reminded me of myself. He had that grit and he never quit. He always kept pushing forward. We all have, if we're lucky, at least one horse in our life that's that horse. You know, for me, it was Idaho. Actually, it was Idaho for Harold because Idaho actually belonged to him, but you know, I took her over and, you know, when she was stolen from us, it just wrecked us because she was such a special horse. And I still remember what it felt like when we looked out into the pasture that morning and she wasn't there. So how did you feel when 
you discovered Newt was not in his pasture. Whenever he didn't come to the gate, whenever I showed up, I just had that sinking feeling in my stomach. I could have dropped to my knees, but I knew I had to look and I had to cover that pasture to make sure he wasn't there. It was devastating. None of the fence was down and I knew that he wasn't in that pasture. And he had three broodmares with him, so I knew he was gone. Did you do a thorough search of the property and the property around your your farm? Yes. I mean, it was a complete search, and there was no sign of anyone. And since it's Newt was a stallion, it's not likely he jumped the fence and ran away from his from his girls at all. No. no. He wouldn't have left them. That'd be like leaving three supermodels in your bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> so you competed with Newt and you crossed country. You took him in many different states. When you were traveling, were you aware that horses were stolen? That was my biggest fear with him. And the jockey and <clears throat> the people that, that ran him, that was their biggest fear. Every day we were terrified whenever we we're on the road with him that he would be taken. Never dreaming that it would happen after I retired him at home. So you actually brought him home and thought that the worst that you didn't have anything to worry about anymore. Correct. Yes. I thought that as secluded as, as he was where we were, that I didn't have to worry about that anymore but wasn't the case. I mean, three years into retirement and he gets taken from a place that you would never think that he'd get taken from. When you, when you walked out that morning and you truly realized that he was gone, did you have any idea what you were gonna do next? Um, what have you done to find Newt? What steps? <clears throat> well, immediately I called the police and got them up there. And, and before, before you answer that, let me note that when we posted this, we gave people the opportunity to ask us questions that they wanted to hear the answers to. So Beth asked, what steps have you taken to find Newt? And Lori wants to know what the process is in your experience. And how did you keep yourself from panicking? Who did you call first? Called 911 first because I knew he was taken. <clears throat> and I figured that they'd be the quickest ones to respond and start looking. And then I called neighbors and family members to help look for him <clears throat> and posted it on Facebook, thinking that I could get a jump on it if anybody saw him in a trailer. Pulled video surveillance on different places and did a lot of the lake work myself. And keeping your sanity. How to keep it is if you don't, nobody else will. So you have to think about him or her or the horse that you've lost. Now, I know it took you a little bit of time to reach out to us, which seems to be the norm uh, for most people. Um, when you finally went to our website did you get a lot of response from people trying to help you yes yes once i got the net posse it was like it just broke loose and and here's the thing newt had a large following in the barrel industry <clears throat> so i did get a decent response but whenever i went to net posse and filled everything out and then got it out there it was almost overwhelming how many people got involved. 
How did you find out about NetPlacy? Julia Edwards wants to know. Uh, somebody sent me, and I can't even tell, say who it was because I can't remember. Um, somebody sent me a text and basically said, you need to get in touch with NetPlacy. And there were a couple other groups that I was told to get in touch with, but they kept insisting on NetPlacy. And I wish I would have gotten in touch with them that day because whenever you lose a horse, every minute is crucial. Every it is. second counts. And we can't, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, we've been doing this for 23 years and we're not just a Facebook page. And there's a lot of experience behind this organization. You know, we're still a shoestring organization. We're not rich. Uh, everybody's a volunteer. But we try our best to make sure that we put the tools there for you to help have people help you. And one of the things that we're going to do now to our list for our listeners, we're going to show you a little bit more about Newt and also how easy it is to go to the website so that you can help. You can help Joe, you can help other people and share their post and share their information or even find it on the website. Yeah, that was just a short clip, but, you know, we put a lot of thought into what we do, working with over 6,000 victims, and we know that there's a lot of tools available on the internet, but we try to make it easier to have, to let people like you use those tools to reach more people. So what kind of support have you received? And this is a big question from law enforcement. When you called them, did what were your expectations? Did you think that you were going to call them and then they were just going to go find your horse? Because that's what a lot of people think when we talk to them. Yeah, and that was my expectations. <clears throat> but you got to remember, the thing about law enforcement is they're, how can I say it? The majority of them are not equine savvy. So you almost have to educate them on the horses on because a horse is a horse to them. So you have to show them the difference between horses. Um, I mean, they're overworked and understaffed and underpaid and underpaid. And a lot of people take them for granted but they just don't have the manpower needed for this. And I've been told by other law enforcement officers and troopers that net posse is gonna be the ones that find my horse for me because they're the ones that are gonna find the lead or it's gonna be somebody like that. Law enforcement does not have the tools to deal with livestock theft, let alone equine theft. Okay. I was lost reading some of our comments. I see that we do have some of our law enforcement advisors here. And that, you know, it's, we really appreciate the help that we get from our law enforcement community. Oh, yes. And, but they have a hard job. <coughs> and yes, they, do. they don't go to college for, or to school for horse theft 101. So it is quite often frustrating for our victims because they do think that, you know, they have this, this idea that if we report it, it's going to happen. And what they don't understand is that when they have a stolen horse, they are now opening up their own stolen horse business. They are the CEO of, in your case, uh, stolen horse newt. And you have to use every tool that you can find 
to search for Newt. How many hours a day do you think you spend searching for your horse? Well, it'd be better to explain that the hours that I don't search for him. The hours that I don't search for him is whenever I finally do get some hours, a couple hours of sleep. Other than that, my mind's always on it. I'm always on the internet, on Facebook, on Craigslist, on auctions, um, everywhere, looking at barrel races. I'm always searching for him. Well, we've had a really good question from Ann Mail. Really? Mail? Hi, Ann. Uh, since he had a freeze brand, is it registered to Joe? Are all the state ag departments and AVMA helping look for this brand? <laughs> well, that's a good question, and that's a good debate. Okay, the freeze brand... It's a good source of identification, but it shouldn't be your only source because here's why. The state of Pennsylvania will register freeze brands, but half the people in the state don't even know where you register, including the places where you do register. You register a freeze brand in your county at your recorder's office. They didn't even know that my brand was there registered. Whenever I did register my brand back in 2000, they didn't even realize that they were in charge of registering that brand. And the state of Pennsylvania does not have brand inspectors. So who's going to tell where that brand came from, let alone if he goes out of state to another state? It doesn't say made in PA under the brand. So you can't cross section and look for that brand if it shows up in Texas. It'd take you months to figure out where that brand come from. You need to do other steps. There needs to be microchips in your horses. You need to identify all your special characteristics of your horses. A freeze brand is beautiful for a billboard, but you can alter it, you can change it. You can't change a microchip in a horse. Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. Uh, one of the questions that I had from L.A. Oh, I like that. Sherry Lawhorn, all law enforcement should have net posse as a tool for stolen horses for their victims. Time is important in what we do. And that is definitely true. I wish we had a way to get that out there. If we have any law enforcement officers that can help us get this done, you know, the tools we have here are second to none. They truly are. Um, and here's one of the questions that I thought was interesting. And I'll answer this one. It's from LA. What is the excuse or lie you are told most often when you locate a horse, stolen horse in someone else's hands? Well, first off, Joe's kind of experiencing this. He hasn't located his stolen horse yet, but he's experiencing some of the, the tales that we hear. But most often the first thing we hear is, I didn't know it was a stolen horse. Did they? Did they not? Most often they know it's a stolen horse. But they, they tell law enforcement that they don't know it's a stolen horse. Therefore, the next question is, well, who did you buy it from? Well, I don't know. It was just a handshake deal. He gave me cash. I shook his hand. He took the horse. Well, you know, and that's and if the, it's the same thing with selling the horse quite often. Who did you sell the horse to? Who did you buy the horse from? Handshake cash. And, you know, it's pretty much off the hook. How do you trace that? And, but that's the most, that's the most uh, often uh, excuse that we hear. And Joe, when you're out on the road, because uh, I know that you're going to horse sales, and I know that this past weekend you were in the midst of a lot of people that uh, were keeping an eye on you as Newt's owner. Uh, when you talk to people, what, things do they tell you when you say my horse is stolen? Well, <clears throat> they feel bad for you. And they tell you they'll keep an eye out for it and they travel around a lot. But then they tell you, I wouldn't even know where to look for it. 
or, you know, you get the cold shoulder. So you learn fast. And I've been in the horse industry for 25 years. And you can tell whenever you're getting BS, whenever you've been around it that long. And Another there's, thing, go ahead. There's a lot of good people out there that, that want to help. And they're there. And I'm thankful for them because they are watching. They are looking for him. And I'll find him. It might take a while. We're not going to give up. Nope. Um, one of the thing that, things that I hear most often, you know, sometimes once people report to us or after, how many horse auctions did you contact before you contacted us to tell them about your horse? Six or seven. Six or seven. Did all of those say basically they would help you? They yes. keep an eye out? Yeah. Well, here's the cold horse truth, folks. Most of them are just giving you lip service. Uh, there are, are some horse auctions, <clears throat> some really good auctioneers and auction owners that will actually help you. But in 23 years, I've found those to be few and far in between. They, they tell you basically whatever they want to, you want to hear to make you go away. And because why did they do that? Do you have an idea, Joe, why they do that? Probably because they'll get in trouble for it. It'll shut them down. No, not really. <laughs> that wouldn't be one of them. <laughs> I, I'm not sure why they do it, but it just, you don't get, you get the cooperation, but you're not getting the cooperation. So. Okay. Uh, we got a question from Gina, but to, to answer that further, the reason most of the time that you don't get help with some of these auctions that the horses go through is because it's all about the money. The people that bring the horses in make the auction the money. And if they start turning in people that are bringing them the horses, then the, what do you think is going to happen? Are they going to go to other auctions? I mean, because there's an auction every day of the week. Sometimes there's several auctions. Um, and people that do this for a living, they just go from one auction to the next. So it's all about the money, in our opinion. Um, they don't really, you know, most people don't really care about the horses that are going through. And that's a, a sad but true fact based on my experience. Gina wants to know if someone stole him you know, to breed mares and falsified breeding records, is the AQHA DNA testing foals for registration now? I believe they are. Yes. That's a question. That's a, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm not quite sure. I mean, we'd have to call the AQHA and, and find out, but all my foals that I had out of him were DNA tested afterwards. Well, here's another question. Is a, a registration paper proof of ownership? Hmm. You might be better to answer that than me. Well, I want to see what you think. I would say yes. And then you would be wrong. Most people think that registration papers are proof of ownership. We actually have a case with AQHA and we have a case with APHA with statements from both organizations that state that a registration paper is not proof of ownership. It's basically proof of who can make the decisions on that horse with the registry. So why would this not be proof of ownership, you think? What, what's wrong with the, why is that piece of paper not pr proof that you own your horse? <clears throat> Maybe because they can be forged. Thank you. Yeah, you could put me in a court of law and I could knock out in 30 seconds or less registration papers. Number one, they can be forged. We're in a digital age. Anything can be forged. Just as Ron Valitz, Rod Valencia in California, in his case, and his paperwork being forged. But also, paperwork at some of these auctions are a dime a dozen. You can go in and some of these traders have paperwork that they can match with other horses. And another reason is a lot of people don't transfer their paperwork. 
So if the paperwork's not transferred on a horse you just bought, does that mean you own it? Or does the person that had the horse before you own it? There's a lot of questions there. So we like to make sure that people understand that you got to have more than your registrations. Yes. yes. And Stacy Black, and she's supporting this right now. She says, I still have my horse's papers and the judge still let the lady have her. And so you got to have more than that. Um, let me see. Autumn wants to know, are there specific questions you feel are important when re reviewing information on possible leads so that you can get the info you need without scaring the tipster or the person who has the horse away? And this is a very good question because we get tips all the time and, you know, we're not really sure how to accommodate those tips sometimes. What do you think, Joe? Well, <clears throat> you've got to learn to read people. <laughs> and that's tough. Um, you've got to know how far you can push the questions to be able to ask them. And if they seem nervous or they don't want to cooperate, you've got to relax a little bit. And you've got to not push it so hard. But you've also got to remember that that horse is dependent on you to find it. So you've got to sort of wing it. It's, it's, it's a hard question to answer. But you've got to try to get as much information as you can without giving up as much information. Because you've got to remember, not everybody's on your side. Well, Linda McCarthy says if he's registered and owned by you and the AQHA originally in your name, you can put a halt to all the current and full registrations. She right. has a friend that did it in the Morgan registry after someone stole her mare. Did you call the registry and did any, what happened when you called the registry? Oh, they were very cooperative. Um, and as a matter of fact, I had the police do it to make sure it was official and documented. Um, so there's a halt on his papers and there's a halt on any foals born out of him. So Pass that. Very, go ahead. They're very cooperative whenever it comes to that. Now past that, did they do anything else? Are they offering to put out any alerts through their organization? No, no. Wouldn't it be great? If the registries themselves would have something, their list stolen horses, yeah. but it, you know, because they're bigger than we are, they're they're huge. Yes, and, and, we, would, and everybody that's in the registry pays into them, so it should be, I believe, a option that they offer you that at least they'll put it in the back of their magazine on the back page. I mean, I'm sure everybody would look and see what horses were stolen. I would. It now, would be awesome if they did that. Now, one of the things we talked about earlier was your freeze brand. Uh, did you tell me that you put your brand on yourself? Yes. You branded your own horses? Correct. So did we. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that you, know, you can do the process. It's actually pretty easy. And you can do it yourself. Now, you talked about having your horse registered in the Pennsylvania registry, and they didn't even know later that you had a horse registered. Did you tell them about that yet? Yeah, I mean, it, it's out there that it's stolen, and that brand should be watched for. Um, but who's going to watch for it? Uh, Susan Dumas has a good uh, remark. She said, I think people also need to be aware that he may be gilded by now. And thank you, Susan, because we are looking at gildings as well. Um, Joe knows why, because uh, yeah. we have had some tips and some leads that we're following, but we're not able to tell the public those, of course. But, you know, we're still waiting for some of those to, to happen. So 
Yeah, he could be a gilding by now. We're still calling him a stallion. There's a, a lot of people ask me for updates. And you need to understand that it's an open investigation and we're following leads. And I really can't share any of those to the public or on social media. Um, but as long as he's up there missing and stolen, you need to know that you, I still need you to look. Well, Linda and, McCarthy says that she's been watching for that brand everywhere. And it, I don't think it would be done yet, but somewhere along the line, somebody could add to that brand yes. and change it. But even if it's added to the, the brand, the original brand is still going to be there. You'll still be able to see it in it if they change it. Um, yeah, or they could burn over it or, or alter it. But if, if, if it's altered, you, you'll still be able to tell, you know, and if there's a scar there because they took it off, there's a reason why that scar is there. So dig deeper then. And even folks, even look when you're looking at some of these videos and pictures online, look at them and see if they've been altered. We have actually seen pictures and videos altered. Uh, we have the expertise now to blow those videos up here and look at the pixels in them, and we can tell if something's been done to the to the video. It's easier to do it to a picture, but you know, with all the little gadgets we have out there now and the apps. I mean, people can whip this out in no time at all. We're living in a digital age. Nothing is exactly as it seems all the time. And one of the things that we like to see added to the brand, because all my horses have freeze brands. Uh, we have two left and one of them has a lip tattoo and he's a racking horse. He also has a freeze mark and a freeze brand and a microchip. Now I didn't do all this because I wanted to put all those different types of IDs on my horses. I did it because I wanted to make sure that I knew how to do it and how I could talk to you guys and tell you if you could do it or not do it. A microchip, most of you don't know that in most states you can microchip your horse yourself. We did. No, not me. Uh, my husband did. It's not something everybody could do or should do, but it is legal to do that. Um, we do have microchips in our store that you can purchase. Um, but the reason we promote the microchip so much with the freeze brand, that's our favorite combo, is because the freeze, freeze band, like Joe said earlier, is your billboard. That brings the attention. But we know that brands can be altered. But if you have a microchip in there, that microchip is your vehicle identification number in your horse. You put it there, you forget about it, and God, you hope you never need it. But if you do, it's there. It's your proof of ownership. Um, there it is. I was waiting for that. In our Net Posse store, you can get microchip kits. And if you look closely, you'll see the Net Posse ID. With the Net Posse ID, this is a registry that we came up with ourselves. And with this registry, we've taken 23 years of experience and put everything into a registry that we can think of to help you prove ownership of your horse, even your vet records, your farrier records, your worming. All of these are trails of ownership. We also like for you to put your bill of sale in there. So when you get your microchip with us, you get not one prepaid registry, but two. And yes, we do have to tell you about this because most people don't know that this is one of our fundraisers. And we do this because it is one of the cheapest and easiest IDs that you can do for your horse. And the register that we have is not like any registry in the country. So we just wanted you to be aware of that. The next question we have is from Sarah and we are looking at it's how likely is it that stolen horses are recovered? Well, that's an, a big question. It depends because 
the only numbers that we can give you, the only stats that we've ever had was back in 1997, 98, when our horse was stolen, Idaho. And there was a study that was put out uh, in Texas and it estimated 40 to 55,000 horses stolen a year. How many are stolen now? I have no idea. There's been no further studies that we found. So the only thing that we know is that through our organization, we depended on when we get the report that we on first day reports, our percentages rank between 39% and 51%. And that's pretty good. But as the time goes on and it gets longer and longer away, then we have less results. But you know what? We don't give up just because the horse has been gone a month, three months, a year. As long as the horse can be alive, we can still find it. So when you see one of our cold cases that says we're looking for a horse, that horse could be standing in your pasture right now. It took 51 weeks for us to find Idaho. And that was before Facebook and social media and all these other things. We had the first uh, stolen horse alert on the Internet in the world. Uh, it took 63 weeks for Cheryl to bring candy home, which I think today might be the anniversary of that. Uh, as Cheryl, if you're there, let us know that for sure. And it took over a de decade for Ron Valencia to bring his horse home. We've had another, another horse that came home after 12 years. So if they're of an age that can still be living, then we still need to be searching for them. Yeah, you know, I have a 38 year old, well, soon to be 38 year old standing in my pasture right now. So, and he has a microchip and he has all the other types of ID. And if he were gone today, I would still hope that somebody would be searching for him. So we're not giving up on Newt. We're not giving up on any of the horses out there. And I see that, um, uh, I, I see that Pete Newsom said three for three recovered with the help of Net Posse. Uh, you know, we love recoveries. And Christine Reese, where was that? Let me see Christine's. Christine said that's an excellent recovery rate. I want you to know that Christine Reese is probably one of the most important people to me when Idaho was stolen. Now, okay, when I <laughs> was stolen, a lot of people uh, came forth to help us. And Christine Reese uh, was one of the first ones that took me by the bootstraps, jerked me up and told me to get control of myself. And then she helped me do so many things to help find Idaho. And if it wasn't for Christine, Idaho may not have ever come home because I would not have had somebody to kick me in the butt to keep me going. And that's one of the things that we try to do for people like Joe, for all our other victims. When you're, when you're down and out and you're about to give up, we're here to keep you going. Uh, Joe, have you found that to? Uh, oh, yes. Yes. If it wasn't for Debbie, I could have crawled up in a corner and just forgot and just not forgot about him, but just drown myself in the sorrow of losing him. How and much help have you received, do you think, to find Newt? It's phenomenal. I mean, I thought the following he had in the barrel world industry was astronomical. And they have been helping but the help that I'm getting also from Net Posse is beyond belief. I mean, I've talked to people from California to Florida to Canada, all across the United States, sending me tips, sending me pictures of horses, whether they're branded or not, keep doing it. Don't feel bad that you sent me one and it's not the horse. It's not new. It's okay. But the outreach has just been phenomenal. I mean, my phone blows up all day long. <clears throat> is there, I know he's, we're going to find him. Is there anything, anybody in particular you would like to thank? Dave Spears, for sure. I would like to thank him. 
For those that don't know, David Spears is one of our law enforcement advisors. He's been with us for many years. Uh, you know, we have questions. We have needs sometimes that are beyond our scope. And we're not going to say what he did recently, but we had a lead. And thanks and to him, we were able to uh, verify it. verify the lead. And he went out of his way. Uh, to do things for us when the law enforcement officials that you would think would have been doing it didn't do it. So, David, thank you very, very much. And there's many other people out there, too. It's <clears throat> I don't think they want to be known who they are, some of them, but I want to thank them, too. And you know who you all are, family members, um, friends have been there for me. Um, there's a lot of people on Facebook, a lot of barrel racers that I've been around, a lot of people I've met. There's too many to thank because if I start, I know I'll forget somebody and I don't want to do that. So I thank you all and I ask you to keep it up because I'm not quitting. Well, Joe, you know, we're going to be coming to the end of this. And today you've heard from just one of our thousands of victims. Like I said earlier, we've had over 6,000 cases over 23 years with Stolen Horse International, starting with mine first. Um, <clears throat> this is part of our educational outreach uh, program. There's no, really no way for anybody to understand Joe's pain, to understand any victim's pain until you've walked in those shoes. We've done this show today to um, hope that maybe you can identify a little bit more with how this, having a horse taken from you, whether it's theft or whether it's a civil matter, or even if it just runs away or gets lost on a, a trail, your horse missing from your life absorbs every part of your body. It's every part of your mind. Would you agree with that, Joe? Yeah. And if you don't think it can happen to you, you're wrong. Because you're very, very few people knew where he was. Very few people knew how to get to him. They did their research. They did their due diligence. So if you think that your horse is safe, you better think again. Because all the years he was barrel racing for 15 years, I worried every day. And the minute I left my guard down is the minute he left. Well, when it happened to us, we didn't even know that people were stealing horses. We didn't know about kill pens or horse slaughter. Um, and to this day, you know, my husband and I still have scars from 23 years ago, things that we can't, we can't see, we can't do. And we had our horse, we got our horse back 51 weeks later. Um, but just as you saw me a few minutes ago, talk about Chris, well, she was Chris Berry back then, Chris Reese. I still remember everything from the day that she was missing to the people that were most important helping me and the people that encouraged me to do what I'm doing today. And I still remember Lois, Chris, and dang, it just went out of my head, but I know who it is. The actual person that made me go after the last tip, but those three people, after we got out of her back, they said, somebody ought to keep this going and start helping other people. And that's what we're doing. Well, I kept it going. And folks, if you want to keep us here, you know, we're totally. Yeah, there's Cheryl. And she says Candy was recovered 16 years ago today. She was missing for 64 weeks. And she was found off of a net posse flyer hanging in a feed store, I think. And. One reason we send out those alert with flyers, folks, is everybody's on the internet, not on the internet, not everybody's on Facebook. But if you can take our alerts, 
and you can share them to somebody or you can take that flyer and print it and take it out to different events or I even put them on the wind under the windshield wiper at events. That's the best way to do it. Um, you know, our flyers are made so you don't use much ink. If they're easy to print and they're easy to carry with you. And this flyer that brought candy home had been hanging in that feed store forever, I think. And then just the right person walked in and that's what we're doing. We're connecting the dots. There's a lot of dots and we got to connect them and we can't do it without you guys. And we can't have programs like this without you guys. So if you want to make a donation, uh, Michelle, who are, is our producer today, Michelle Harris, all these little things that you see going on underneath. Uh, there's a third person in this broadcast and she's controlling all of that. And all of us are first timers. So I hope that you've enjoyed this program. I hope that you'll take a moment and make a donation so that we can do more because we want to do a program on civil death. Uh, and I know there's a lot of you involved in that. And then we want to do a, a program on just different types of ID. And the better that we get at this and more experienced, uh, we hope to pull in, you know, really good guests and just be better and better. Um, so our time's about to run out, Joe. And I'm going to ask you one thing. And I've asked, I've waited for this question last because as a victim, it's even hard for me to ask the question because I feel the answer. I know the answer. So Joe, how has having Newt stolen from you changed your life? Everything that I was doing and building <clears throat> and where I was building my place was for Newt and I to retire. And without him, it's never going to be the same. That's why I'll never quit looking for him. Because that place, I picked out just so I could watch him enjoy being a horse every day. Because that boy never quit on me. And he always excelled. And he always gave me everything. He made me who I was in this barrel industry. And I'll never let him go. We're never going to stop looking for him. We're going to bring him home. If you're listening to this program, please, please go to netposse.com. Click on that search bar, type in newt. And his listing will come up and you can print that flyer and you can post it. And, you know, we have thousands of other victims on our site, too. They need your help. I see many of them here today uh, posting comments. I wish I could uh, talk to all of them, but I can't. But folks know that I think of you all the time. I do. Anyone and that has a horse needs to help these people find their horse because you could be the next person tomorrow. You could, you know, what amazes me sometimes is people that will not post an alert or will not share an alert because, and they have a because, but we've actually seen the same people lose their horses. And it's, it's different when you're on the flip side and you need the help. So think about it, folks, put your, put yourself in my shoes, Joe's shoes, and the thousands of victims that we have still looking for their horses, go find a, an alert today and just post it on your page, post it on a group. And maybe that one post will be the one that connects the dots. And with this, we're going to end with a little more about Newt. And thank you so much for coming. I hope you'll share this broadcast after it's over. It will be here. And if you have any questions, post them underneath the video on the page and we will answer. And I'm sorry I didn't get to all the questions. I've had some people, Julia, I'm sorry, I couldn't get to all your questions. They were good questions, but uh, we're going to have other shows and um, 
we'll once again we'll prepare ahead of time and give you a chance to ask so joe let's take the show out of here and watch newt run a barrel race for us bye-bye everybody <laughs>